I have no idea how to tell this story. I don't even know how to start it. This is the story of my senior year of high school and how it destroyed my life. Your father and I want to talk to you about something sad. Rachel Kushner has been diagnosed with leukemia. That sucks. It sucks. It sucks quite a bit. You might be someone who could make Rachel feel better. I don't need your stupid pity. I'm not here because I pity you. I'm actually here because my mom is making me. <laughs> it's actually worse. So I love this movie and I mean a lot of this movie deals with this journey to, to get to know yourself. I know you guys are all young actors, like young in your careers and doing big things. Like, I want to know how that journey has been as a career to get to know yourselves as actors so far. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I, uh, you know, as an actor, you're always looking for like a really great role. You know, it's not necessarily a type of movie in this movie. It's just a really great role. And I feel like I never, I've never had to be so emotionally available in a film. And it kind of required me to kind of challenge myself in that way. And I never really had before. So. I just kind of grew up a lot, I don't know, and I empathized in a way that I had never really had to before. And it was uh, definitely a very profound experience. Yeah, I feel like I've been searching for a role that um, is mature, you know, um, even though I'm playing a teenager, it, felt, it, it, feel, it definitely feels like my most adult role and my most adult performance, um, so that's exciting. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's opening not just new, uh, doors acting wise but personal wise you know that it's just like opening up the doors of RJ that I didn't know were there yeah. yeah so it's like just discovering new stuff about me everyone was gonna find out sooner or later one thing you can do if you don't want to talk to anyone is just enter a subhuman state pretend you're someone annoying hi Rachel I'm really sorry you have cancer <laughs> exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> so if this was a touching romantic story, our eyes would meet and suddenly we would be furiously making out with the fire of a thousand suns. But this isn't a touching romantic story. Anyway. Yep. Who is this little friend? Earl's just my coworker. I've known him since kindergarten. What you got, cat? Wanna fight? Then think so, punk ass cat. So you and Greg are co-workers? Nah, we friends. Dude's terrified of calling somebody his friend. Dude's got issues. But how are you co-workers? We make films. Movies? They're terrible. Greg, you never told me. So much of this film pivots on or selling this relationship between your character Greg and your character Rachel. But how did y'all do off screen? Well, all of you guys, how did y'all do off screen to like kind of bond and get to have that rapport on screen? No, I mean, we get that question a lot, but like, we don't really have a good answer. We just got on. We just, we, we just became friends off the bat. I think it's really hard to fake something like that. You know, I think it would have been very um, obvious if we didn't like each other because you spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week with each other, and we, you know, you have to get along, and you wouldn't want to spend that much time with it. You wouldn't want to spend any time that you didn't want to off screen with them if you didn't like them. Just loved each other. Yeah, we spent a ton of time mm -hmm. after all work time. and then like the yeah, all time together. All time together. <laughs> the idea behind each one was we took a film that we liked and we made the title stupider and then made a new film to reflect the new title. It's a formula that only produces horrible films, but for some reason we keep using it. You need to make a film for Rachel. Hi, Rachel. I don't really know you, but I believe in you. I know you're Jewish, but God has a plan for you. Out of all the people in the school, I don't hate you. And Greg and Earl, your, your characters, Greg and Earl, were uh, making, remaking all these classic films. And I know that those films were probably in the script, but if you could remake your own films right now, like what would some of those films be, or what one of those film, films be? Um, well, I would, it's, it's a couple. I mean, you got, um, I could do Slow and Delirious off of Fast and Furious, um, instead of The Longest Yard, The Shortest Foot, um, instead of boys in the hood, um, girls in the cul-de-sac, you know. Girls in the cul-de-sac. You know, different ones. Any for you? Um, I don't know. RJ is so much better at making yeah. stuff like on the spot. Like every single time, he has something new. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know. The other departed. Uh, I sharded. <laughs> well, that, that's Olivia. See, I can't even make up my own. Um, I don't know. You guys were making a movie for me. We tried a bunch of stuff and it's not that good. Now is not the time for your, I'm Greg, I suck, nothing I do is any good thing. We agreed to do a film that we have no idea what it should look like or even be. What was I thinking? I'm so tired of you treating this girl like she a burden. Because somebody actually cares about you, her life is over after this. And, and lastly, 
last question. CJ, I, I have to talk to you about your, your trip. Uh, this first time film for you came from Jacksonville, and I mean, I know that you you tell the story best, but it, it almost got crucial. You was almost sleeping in a car. Can you tell yeah. a little about like just having this moment now that this film is almost done and you know coming from there? Yeah, it's like a, 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 a reassurance, you know? Um, it's like a faith confirmation type thing, is it, it, you know? Um, it's, it's, it's like a slingshot effect. You know how with a slingshot you gotta pull it to the, almost to the breaking point for you to like shoot as far as you can go. That's what God was doing with little RJ, you know? He had to take me to my lowest point so now I can like strive towards my highest and I feel like this is my launch pad, so yeah. Hey, well, bravo man, great film. Everybody's gonna love me, Earl, and a dying girl. I'm glad you're not dying and we're all here, so <laughs> good job. Thank you. <laughs> Life can keep unfolding itself to you just as long as you pay attention to it. It was the best of times. <laughs> Worst of times. It's so much harder than I thought it would be. It was life.